When people talk about big powers, they will naturally mention America, Russia, China, NATO, or might be India. Due to their large population, a big size of a territory, developed economy, strong military, global influences, and powerful leaders. In international relations, power is regarded as a capacity to enforce or control to the outcome. National power is uh, also a comprehensive power. It covers all social relations, uh, both tangible and uh, intangible. In world affairs, a country's uh, foreign policy is to maintain its interest with all of its powers. In 1975, Ray Klein, a U.S. Uh, intelligence officer and scholar, published his book, The World Power Assessment, a calculus of a strategy drift, in which a calculus formula of national power was provided. That is, perceived power equals uh, critical mass, that's uh, population plus territory, plus economy, plus uh, military, and at times strategy plus wealth. The first one is uh, population. It is commonly believed that more hands are stronger than less. More population is critical to our country's power and position. In the 10 most populous countries include China, India, America, and Russia. So power lives in people. For power of mind is most creative and uh, everlasting. Canada and Australia are hard to be big powers for they have much more length, but much fewer hands. Yet the population itself is no power. We see in the 10 most popular countries, Nigeria has 214 million people, and Bangladesh has 162 million. Yet they are not powerful countries, and actually in poor conditions. And in China, during 1840 to 1945, with 300 million people, yet it witnessed China's decline. And the Indians in America originally had been over 100 million. Yet with European immigration and colonization for the past centuries, the Indians decreased to minorities. The second is territory. Land is the most important resource for human beings. And with land, you will have abundant resources. Russia is the largest country in the world uh, with about 17 million square kilometers. Its spacious territory benefits from its traditional expansionism and has kept Russia secure from foreign aggressions like Napoleon's invasion in 1812 and the Nazi Germany's blitzkrieg in the Second World War and even today's challenges from America and NATO. America is also a country that grows very fast since its independence. Its Louisiana Purchase in 1803, its Alaska Purchase in 1867, and manifested destiny and a westward expansion, and its wars uh, with Mexico and with Spain has made today's America the Pacific Ocean in the west and the Atlantic Ocean in the east has kept the continent safe so far. China is a large country, and most of its territories were still unoccupied, even Japan invaded, with full-out military taking over in the 1930s. Topography sometimes plays a vital role in territory. Iraq is flat with deserts, being easily attacked. Afghanistan is full of mountains, so it has been a graveyard for empires. Great Britain, the Soviet Union and the United States all failed in the guerrilla wars in Afghanistan. Vietnam is covered with rainforests, so it is also a tough place to conquer. Third, the economy. For thousands of years, human beings have been engaged in farming, animal husbandry, and uh, craftsmanship. Yet with the Industrial Revolution, the traditional world totally changed. That industry and the technology freed people from a lot of labors. 
that increase the national economy, wealth, and even military power in many folds. And therefore, a great differences occur. From 1895, and America actually became the largest economy in the world. During the first of the war, America accumulated greater wealth by doing business with both sides of the war. And in the Second World War, America's great potential in manufacturing made it the arsenal for all the democratic nations. After World War II, America's GDP accounted for more than half of the world. With the class of the Soviet Union and the rise of other big powers, and especially with the financial crisis in 2008, America has been in a tendency of decline. And high tax, such as communication, biology, IT, the information technology, and the AI, I, that's the artificial intelligence, that plays more and more important roles in the economy. And America still keeps this leading position in most of the trade and accounts for 25% in global economy and still the largest so far. For the past four decades, China's reform and often dual policy and its orientation to free market made it the second largest economy in the world and no more the poor, closed, and left behind country. First, military. One of the key elements of national power is strong military. Formation time, war, and victory have been crucial to the survival and growth of a nation. The king of Alexander the Great reunified the Greek wall and defeated the mighty power of the Persian Empire. In 221 BC, Chinese first emperor Qin Shi Huang he conquered another six states in the east and unified China for the first time. Julius Caesar, the great general who overcame Gaul and uh, Britain for Rome, the emperor of Augustus Octavian, defeated Mark Antony and Cleopatra, ended the Roman civil war. In 1453, the empire of Ottoman Turkey took over Constantinople, his temple, and ended the East Roman Empire of Byzantine. In 1588, Britain destroyed Spain Armada, and since then, as a sea power, it established an empire that the sun never set. Napoleon Bonaparte controlled most of the European continents and finally failed in Battle of Waterloo in 1815. France was defeated in Franco-Prussian War in 1870, and Germany was unified, and the Empress coronation was held in French palace of Versailles. During the First World War, all European powers were greatly damaged, and in the Second World War, Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan were demolished, with the United States and the Soviet Union as the two super powers in the Cold War. Fifth, strategy. Strategy is a fundamental and a long-term vision and a goal for our country. It is a kind of choice for the direction of a nation, for success or failure, rise or fall. In his farewell speech in 1796, George Washington admonished American people to avoid permanent alliances with foreign nations, to protect the young republic, by being neutral, which inspired American isolationism for more than a century and a half. Germany, under von Bismarck, and after three wars with Denmark, Austria, and France, separately in 1864, 1866, and in 1870, had achieved German unification. With the rising challenges of Germany, the long-time rivals of Britain, France, and Russia that came closer in two world wars. In Cold War, the two superpowers of America and the Soviet stood off face-to-face, -face, maintaining power balance. After the collapse 
of the Soviet Union. America had tried all means to keep its monopoly and further contaminate to China and Russia. Even in the latest Ukrainian crisis, the Kiev government hoped to abandon the neutral policy to embrace the West. Washington hoped to wear down Russia with a war of friction, and Moscow managed to keep Ukraine as a buffer zone and carrying out a special military operation all around in order to get more control areas for the two independent states in the East. The sixth, the willpower. The personal charisma and the willpower of the rulers and the leaders are closely connected with the destiny of a nation. And each great nation has its great heroes with strong willpower. Peter the Great, that transformed Russia from the outdated empire to be more modern, westernized, and powerful. The Chinese Kangxi Emperor of Qing Dynasty took over Taiwan, Tibet, Xinjiang, Mongolia, and formed the landscape of China's territory of today. Franklin Roosevelt was paralyzed, yet sitting in wheelchair, implemented New Deal domestically and shaped American global leadership. Winston Churchill is famous for his talents, humor, and determination to maintain the shading splendor of the British Empire, the Gulf, in defiance of all hardships and persistently preserved the honor and the big power status for France. Joseph Stalin, with his ruthless control, made the Soviet survive in the Second World War and a civil power for over four decades. Chairman Mao, regardless of his personal safety, went to Chongqing for peace negotiation with Jiang's nationalist government. Deng Xiaoping, after numerous setbacks and frustrations in political struggles, succeeded in steering China to open door policy and today's economy achievement, putting for restoration of Russia as a global power and dare to challenge America and NATO face to face. Besides strategy and willpower, some other intangible or spiritual factors still work as a national power amplifier, such as morality, discipline, morale, ideology, patriotism, tradition and value orientation, propaganda and public opinion. Even other soft powers like a Hollywood movie and a McDonald's quick for the service culture. Yet, uh, calculated national power is not the same as the exact numbers in mathematics. For human being, is ever fickle and uh, changeable. So sometimes it is hard to say how powerful a nation is. Thanks for your time today, and see you next session.